Tell me about ISIS. Is ISIS Islamic or not? Yeah, that's that's one of the most questions I get. Um, I think that um, I, I, I call ISIS the toxic mix. The toxic mix is a result of bad uh, governance within the Iraqi government. There is discrimination that's facing that Sunnis are facing within Western and, and Northern Iraq. Um, then you have the civil war in Syria, and then you have the American uh, intervention in Iraq that led to not very good management during the period from 2003 until the Americans left the country. So, do I think that ISIS is fully Islamic? Uh, it's only a result of pure Islam, of somebody reading the Quran? No. Do I think that Islam is part of ISIS? I definitely do. Because you would not be able to establish the feminist state in Iraq and Syria uh, if you would not have a popular support or culture that appreciates this word. So the same thing happens with, fem- with Islam, Islam, Islamic uh, state. If they, they use Islamic language, they, uh, they use the book that most people are reading and look at as a literal world of the creator of the universe, then that is their tool and also their ideology, uh, or at least a part of the ide- ideology, to recruit more people and to get more fighters to establish an Islamic state. Can you tell me about the people that are in hiding and how you would like to help them with this new endeavor? Yes, is that, uh, so well, we talked a bit about ISIS and there is the Iranian regime and there is the Saudi Arabian regime and, and, and so on, is that there is, there is a rising, I would say, there is a rising group of people who do not subscribe to the ideology of ISIS, who do not subscribe to violence and, and who, who I would say a minority, a minority not necessarily in numbers, but a minority in terms of, of power and, and help. So like you have people like ISIS, they have millions of dollars of funding, they have support, they have everything. You got the Iranian militias or the Iranian sponsored militias in Iraq. They also have millions of dollars and millions of funding and so on. And But the people who are left out, the, the, the people who, the progressives, the liberals, the secularists, the atheists, hardly get any help. So I'm working on a project. It was started first by Google, and now it's acquired by an organization called Advancing Human Rights, called movements.org. And the whole concept of movements is to help activists living in these closed societies, like Iraq, like Syria, like North Korea, like Russia, but my focus is on the Middle East, and help them to connect them with people who can offer help from the other side, from the free world. And um, this, this, these people on the free world can be anything, can be somebody who knows editing, can be somebody who knows uh, audio production, can be somebody who knows uh, legal, how to help people with legal help and so on. So we crowdsourced this endeavor. So we call it the match.com for human rights. Is that people making requests, the other people making offers and we match them. So I'm gonna give an example, like the Bengali secular bloggers who are being targeted by Islamic militias. They reached out to me, they sent the articles in Bengali. Then somebody translated this article to English. And the other person, who is also another individual, edited this article. And then the Daily Beast, which is a a media company we have a partnership with, published the article. And that article helped these two secular bloggers to escape Bangladesh and get an asylum in a Western country. So these three people don't know each other, work together to help people living in a closed society. And I think, especially within the secular movement, we are, we are highly a very intellectual movement. We are people with a lot of skills, with a lot of passion to help other people and to help people in their own community. Imagine if all the people within the secular movement in the West, whether in America, in Canada, in Australia, each one of them, each member of that community can apply their skills. I like, I'm good in this, I'm good in this, I'm good in that, and go to movements.org, sign up, and fill the form, and then, they will see hundreds and hundreds of people, activists in, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, in Iraq, in Syria. They're desperate just for somebody who can help them with these specific skills that they wouldn't have because of the lack of funding and the lack of organization and so on. So we are trying to create, to match them 
with people who are passionate to help these folks. Let's talk about safety. Are someone who uses the website, are they using their real name? Is there life in danger? What's that about? Not necessarily. We, we have created a system in which people can go anonymous and ask for help and connect with people who can help without revealing their information. Like when people sign up as, a, as an activist, they, we give them an advice that it's, it's, we, you should not use your real name. But if you are open and public about it, like we have, for example, uh, an Iraqi secular in the Iraqi parliament, his name is Mal Lusi. He's well known enough. He put, already put his life in, in, in public, so he used his real name. But there's an activist in hiding, living in southern Iraq, but he's looking for a graphic designer, looking for help. He doesn't necessarily need to use his username as his real name. And we have a vetting system, so we do a lot of background checking on the people who sign up. So we make sure that all the people who, who have re make requests and something like this, they have legitimate, they're legitimate people with legitimate concerns. So we go on conversations with them, we ask think tanks to verify if this, some of this information is true. And also, on the, on the receiving end from the offer side, we also do, do uh, background checks. So we created a vetting system from zero star to five star. So if somebody is, we did a good background check on, we know who he is or who she is, and has a long, long history, we put them like four stars or five stars. If somebody we're very skeptical about, we still keep him in the pending mode until we do extra background check to know that this person is real and has real concerns. So in terms of security, I mean, there's no way you can have 100% security. I mean, I'm not going to say anything this week, even within social media and Facebook and Google, and you can never have 100% security. But I, I think we're doing our best to maximize security because these are people, I mean, I'm deeply, deeply passionate about. Like when I get a request from, from Bangladesh or Pakistan or somebody saying, oh, look, the Islamic extremists are looking after me, I can easily correlate with this person. I was in his position just before I came to the West. I've, I've, I was most of my life in danger and knowing exactly what these people feel. So I, I put their security as one of my most important things, that your security, your future, um, how, how how we can help you is one of the most, and that's that's really like I'm doing my passion on this on this project. So, wrapping it up for me, what do you want to accomplish with this? What's your what's the end zone, man? The end zone is I I think the the West has tried multiple ways with multi multi intervention and and things like this, thinking that the enemy is binary and. You get rid of Saddam Hussein, thinking that, oh, things are going to get better. I think that the battle against ISIS, the battle against the, the, the Ayatollahs, is, is, is an ideological warfare. And that warfare must have come from within. I think it's a false assumption to assume that all the people in the West care about liberal values and, and, and human rights and so on. There are so many people there who adhere to these values, who... I think are the ones who are going to change things for the better. The change is not going to come uh, from the outside. It's going to come from the within. But the West can play a role in helping and advancing the cause of these folks by being by creating a solidarity movement. And uh, I think I mean the change is not going to come anytime soon. And I, I don't claim to know the, the full answer. But I think that helping these activists who believe in in women's rights, in LGBT rights. In individual rights, if we help them advance their cause, they're going to change their countries to the better within a long but strategic and um, I would say sustainable peace in the Middle East region.